It's good to have you in our Sunday School teaching for the 19th of March 2023 and our topic is relationships in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are good and your mercies endure forever. We come before you, our God, and pray, Lord, that your grace, Lord, to deliver this message will be given to us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I declare, Lord, that without you, we can do nothing. Therefore, precious, precious Holy Spirit, I pray that you take over this time, that your word will go out in power, and that your people will be helped. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our first reading from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 31. Ephesians 5, 22 to 31. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their hus own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. Let, let's go to chapter 6 verses 1 to verse 5. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Okay, finally let's go to John. John chapter 13 and in verse 35 John 13 35 and that verse says Jesus was talking there and he says by this shall men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another now when we are talking about relationships uh, let's, let's first of all remember that every relationship of God, every plan of God, every movement of God, everything that God does is done in love. Everything that God says is said in love. Therefore, when we are talking about a Christian and his relationships, this relationship must be based on the love that God has shared abroad, has poured into our hearts. It is out of that fullness of love in our hearts, placed there by God, that we relate to people. Generally speaking, Whatever the situation is, whoever it is, believer, unbeliever, I am sorry to lament that a lot of Christians have left love behind because of the experiences that we have, and it should not be so. 
if Satan succeeds in taking love out of a Christian's equation, then that Christian is empty. Because the foundation of God, the Bible says that God is love. And therefore, anybody that loves lives in God and God in him. That is the basis, the foundation from which we can now go into this, our study today. And Jesus emphasized that he said, when you love your brethren, we have, not, we have now narrowed it from loving everybody, as the Bible says, to loving your fellow Christians. Jesus says, this is how people around you, unbelievers, your brothers, and sisters who are not saved, your parents, your friends who are not believers, this is how they will know that you are my disciples because I am love and therefore when you love one another, that is how and that is the hallmark. In uh, Russia, some Christians were arrested many, many years ago, not these days. Because they were preaching the gospel. They took the gospel, they took the Bible, small gold Bibles, to Russia. And they were arrested for that. And they were put in different prison rooms, different cells. And the authorities would go and question them. Hey, you see, we know. We know what you did. We know it. Because the prisoner in room so so and so has said it. He has betrayed you. That one will say, no, it's my brother. He can never, ever betray me. They will try another one. That one will say the same thing. They will try another one. They, will... they say, wow, these people love one another. These people, what they are saying must be true. What they are saying about their God and about their Jesus must be true. Love one another. We were taught in those days when we were born again new that the blood relationship between a Christian and another Christian is stronger than the blood relationship between a brother and another brother from the same parents unless that person is also a Christian. Let me take that again. I am a Nigerian and I go and meet somebody, a Chinese, who is a Christian. The bond, the love between us should be stronger than the love between me and another Nigerian close relative who is not a Christian. That is how it should be. Think of it this way. You have a brother, a sister from the same mother, from the same father, and he is not a Christian and you are. That relationship ends in death. Once one of you dies, that's it. But the relationship and the love between a brother, a Christian brother, and a Christian brother will last eternity. In heaven, it continues. God needs to reveal the love that Jesus has for us and which love he says we should have for one another. God needs to reveal that to us. Heaven said that. The Bible says, husband, love your wife. And it goes ahead to say, wives, Submit to your own husbands. Now, we're not going to, we don't have a lot to say about that because there's so much to say. But let us just speak one, a few things. Number one, God says, husband, love your wife. In another place, the Bible says that the woman is a weaker vessel than the man. Now, it is easier to love somebody who is vibrating at the same level as you, whatever area of life that is. It is easier than to love somebody who is not as strong. It is very true. Let me say, for instance, you have to do a three mile walk. From Umuchakma to Obinto. Say, make it five miles from Umuchakma to Tutu. And you have, you're walking with your fellow man. 
He says he had to walk the five miles with him because he's strong. And you guys are encouraging each other and you're going. It's more difficult to walk with a woman who is not as strong, who will walk half a mile and she's already looking for somebody to lap her and to help her along the way. I'm just using that as an example. That is why God says, husband, love your wife because this woman is weaker in most areas. This woman, cho -cho 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 sometimes, will talk a hundred words per minute. This woman is the person who will cry for no reason. This person is the person who will likely in some areas go late to church. This is the person who is who is more likely to get depressed, more likely to get anxious and worried. This is the person who is more likely to be physically weak after her monthly periods, after pregnancy and having a baby. Because of these reasons, God says to the man, look, this person that I'm giving you is weak, but you must make extra effort. You must do all you can to love her. That is the reason. Now, woman, there are things, okay, let's, therefore, husband, it will be easier for your wife to submit to you if you show her love. It's as simple as that. That one, there's no argument. If you don't show her love, it will be difficult for her to, you're making life difficult for her. It's as simple as that. Yes, woman, submit to your own husband as the church submits to Jesus. What is it that makes it easier for the church to submit to Christ? So, okay, let's take the 12 disciples. What made it easier for them to submit to Jesus in everything? It is because Jesus demonstrated love for them. Jesus loves us so much. Jesus defends us. Jesus teaches us. Jesus provides for us. Jesus protects us. It is easy to submit to such a person than to somebody who doesn't care about you. Therefore, husbands, as the head of the, of the family, Make things easier for your wife to submit. Make things easier for your children to obey. If you don't, then <laughs> don't expect instant submission and obedience. You haven't paid school fees for your child. You haven't provided clothing and other things. I say, hey, son, now, I want you to run a mile to go and get me this, that, and that. He knows that he should be in school. He's at home because his school fees hasn't been paid. And you want him to obey you instantly like this. It's more difficult. It's more difficult. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, whatever they tell you to do that agrees with what God says, obey. No question. Wives, submit to your husbands as of, on, uh, as of the Lord. As we read down that chapter 5, we find that the Bible says another thing that husbands should do. It says that Jesus teaches the church with the word. He washes us with the water of the word. And at the end, it says, husbands ought to do so. Therefore, every husband has an extra, an added duty. Of course, it's not added. It's a primary duty to teach your wife. God confirmed this. We're not going into that story. I've shared it before many years. But 
That is one of our functions. What do you teach your wife? Teach your wife the word of God. Spend time on the word. Why she is suffering this and that. Why she is busy cooking. Why she is doing this. Study the word. And be ahead of her. That is what God expects us to do. Of course, that is if you are a child of God. If you are not, sorry. It won't work. Teach her the word of God. Teach her manners. Teach her obedience. As she submits to as you submit to God, your wife learns submission. As you obey God, your wife learns obedience. And I have seen this practically. My wife is more loving when I'm more prayerful. And when I'm more study, more studious. I have seen this and it is very true. That is scriptural. A friend of mine shared a story many many years ago she got married he got married before me and he said that the wife challenged him he didn't say the details but the wife just tolashed him in such a way that he was so angry and he wanted to react and act like a man the spirit of god said did you say you're head of the of the family now show leadership and he controlled himself and that situation was, was diffused the way we react to our wives what are we teaching them it is not just teaching them the word it is also teaching them manners it's also teaching them the way if you're able to control your anger then you have taught your wife so much if you are able to say the truth always, your wife will learn to say the truth. And so on and so forth. One of the duties of the husband is to teach the wife. So the Bible says. And the Bible also says, husband. So it says, a man shall leave his, his um, uh, father and mother and cling to his wife and they too shall become one what do we learn from there don't expect so much from your wife if you are still so much tied to your father and your own mother and your brothers and sisters that is not somebody said oh if this girl that I married doesn't obey my mom I'll divorce her that is trash that is not Christianity that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says, that is why the Bible doesn't talk about woman, leave your father and mother. No, that is natural in most of the cultures. But the one that is difficult is for a man. When you have gone out, marry the girl, bring her home. In the morning, your mother will come and knock. Bo -bo 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 -bo. How na day? Good morning, ma. And so on and so forth. Hmm. What is that? You haven't swept the house, woman. Look at the food you are cooking for my son. And all that and all that. No. And then you agree with your mom. You clean the marriage. No. That's not how it should be. This is your home. Your home, your wife's home. That you now own equally. It is not your dad that should come and say what happens in this one. They can give advice. That's fine. Healthy advice. Remember that this is now your, your father. Oh man, is a visitor in this home. Your mother is a visitor in this home. This home belongs to two of you. They give guidance as much as you need it. Not the other way around. And are you a mother-in-law? You should know and respect the integrity of your son and his wife. That is their home. You have married your own for 50 years, for 30 years, and so on and so forth. Don't come and spoil this new home. Father-in-law, we should know our limits. We should know our boundaries and keep to them. Otherwise, 
you're causing trouble in somebody else's home. Like, let me say that again. My sister comes to my house. Of course, my brother, they are free to come. But they must know their limits. If you're causing trouble in my home, hey, stay in your own house. You need money, I would give you if I can afford it. I'll help you if I can help you. But you won't come to my house to cause trouble. I'll send you away. It's as simple as that. Praise the Lord. Um, now, the other thing we want to say here is that before you look for somebody to marry if you're not married yet, one of the reasons why everybody cannot marry everybody is not, not everybody is compatible with the other person. There are, look for compatibility in spiritual things, in academic things, in social standing, in manners, and so on and so forth. But, but, Reverend Omar used to say, he says that in your area of weakness, God will give you somebody that is opposite so as to help each other. And he gave an example. He says that if you're too liberal, you're too open-handed, God will give you a stingy wife so that you don't give away your children. And that is true. Let me share a testimony. When we got married new, my wife and I were always quarreling about nothing, disagreeing about nothing. And then uh, she was in Calabar, she was in Union Calabar, and I went to visit her. And we went to this church. And it was a child dedication. And the reverend who was preaching started talking about children, how to bring the child up, and so on and so forth. And suddenly switched over to marriage. He says, when two young people are married, it is like the point of meeting of two rivers. He says there's always turbulence. When two rivers meet, it's blue, 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 there's always turbulence. He says, but as the water flows down, as the river, the now one river flows down, it smoothens out. He says, that is how it is between people who are newly married. He said, this person is coming from a completely different background and you are, you are not identical twins. He says, there has to be differences in, in interests, differences in manners, and so on and so forth. He says, you have to tolerate each other. When he said that, I looked at my wife and she looked at me. Oh, is this what has been causing her problem? So she's not a devil. I'm sure she would have been thinking the same thing. Our marriage began to be healed from that moment that we heard that statement. Now, in your area of weakness, I am very, very horrible in money management. And my wife is very good in managing money. God purposely did it like that so that we will not run bankrupt. Initially, when we got married, I wasn't listening to her. And things were always going wrong. I learned my lesson quickly. And then, so God purposely brought us together. She was at different pole from me. But we began to learn from each other. And we began to move closer. And by now, we're not yet 100% there after 31 years of marriage. But we are close, so it doesn't tend to cause a lot of trouble. You are a city boy. You were brought up in Lagos. And you go to Abawan to marry a girl. She doesn't see things the way you do, even if two of you are equally educated. You must make allowance. Learn from her and let her learn from you so that you can help each other. Finally, it talked about um, servants, employees. This is the one area that Nigeria as a whole has problem. Somebody employs you in whatever capacity and you want to finish the money. Oh, he is rich. Oh, he's overseas enjoying himself. No, he's not enjoying himself. He's enjoying cold, snow cold, to save money, to borrow money, and he comes back 
and sets up a business in the village so that you can be employed. And all you do is to liquidate the money. Too bad. Somebody goes and suffers and buys a lorry and gives you to drive. And you get a thousand naira in a day and you give him 200 naira and pocket 800 naira. You're a thief. That is why a lot of businesses are not set up. People have money to set up businesses, but the people that they want to employ are not accountable and they are not employable. You are an employer. Behave your go, go down and learn character. Don't be a thief and finish and run down the business. And as an employer, don't expect your employees to give you proper account if you're stingy. It is only recently I heard that somebody pays a nurse, an auxiliary nurse, 6,000, 7,000 naira a month in today's Nigeria. Are you joking? No. So when she steals your medication, don't blame her because you know that 6,000 naira is not enough for a month. So it goes either way. God help us. In Jesus name. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you are not born again, say this prayer after me. And you want to give your heart to Jesus. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Keep me until eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I bring these ones before you and every one of us that you will give us the grace to even obey you, to do that which you have taught us today. Thank you. Is anybody sick among us? Lord, I pray that you stretch forth your hand of power and of healing and touch such a one. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.